Oh, the first one that we we remember on it is the temple and also the tabernacle. And uh, we call it the sanctuary. Okay, now the second question is, what are the subdivisions, the three subdivisions of the, the tabernacle? Hello? What? Yes, hello, we can, I can hear you. What are the subdivisions? Our connection was lost, sorry. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe repeat um, what you asked? Oh, sorry. I said, what, what are the subdivisions of uh, the tabernacle, the three subdivisions? There are three of them. So what are the three subdivisions of the temple? It's, it's, the, it's the outer court. Outer court. The holy place. The holy place. And the holy of holies. Yeah. The holy of holies, exactly. Wow, wow, Hello. wow. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Hello. Perfect, excellent. Can you hear me now? Yes. You're breaking up a bit. I'm not sure if it's from our side. Yeah. Oh, I, I see. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Oh, sorry if that is the case. Uh, uh, do you hear me uh, properly now? Yes. Okay. yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what are the seven things that you need to remember when it talks about the temple? What, what are the seven things? Yes, the there were seven. You start with at the entrance. The, yes, the door. Mm -hmm. And then there is the altar. Of exactly. Mm -hmm. Then there's the labor. Okay. Um, After that, you're going to the holy place. Mm -hmm. to the now inside of the holy place. It's the candles. The candlestick. And the mm -hmm. table of showbread. Mm -hmm. And then there is um curtain. The golden and the oh the golden altar of incense. Sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And the the, um, the curtain that divides. Yeah. What do you call okay. it? Is it uh, the is veil? It? We call it the, the veil. veil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Then you get the ark of the covenant. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the holy of holies. Yeah. It's the ark of the covenant, and out. Outside is is the um, law of the ordinances, and then inside the ark of the covenant. Oh no, on top is the mercy seat, and there's mm -hmm. two angels that God God guard the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Say, and inside is the ten commandments. The staff of Aaron. Mm -hmm. And the manna. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Uh, you 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 nailed it, and and it is good <laughs> to know that that you 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 came through it very easily once we had it last week, and and yes. and, and congratulations for that. Now we are going to, I am I am going to show you something on the screen. I hope you can see it. This is it. Okay. Do you see what I show? What I am. Showing it's you busy loading still. Ah, yes, we can see. Yes, Thank we can see. It. Okay, so it's exactly the same way, but now the, the 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 position that we are watching it is from the top of the the tabernacle, and we also we always see the outer court courtyard that is also the name of it. Okay, then the holy place and the holy of holies, as we can see here, and then. Um, this as well is called the most holy place, another mm -hmm. name of it. And then this is the gate, as we said, and this is the fence. And as yes. you can see, the entrance gate, the altar of burnt offering, the love lover, then the door, there is another door here, and then the table of shoe bread, then the menorah, that is also another name of uh, the, can uh, the candlestick. Menorah, that is the Hebrew name of it. So when you hear about that, it is talking about the, the candlestick. And then the altar of incense, 
and then the veil, and then the Ark of the Covenant. Now, uh, let me show you something that is very interesting. Let me resize what I am going to do. When I take this like this, okay? And I take mm -hmm. this like this, what do you see of them? The cross. Uh, do you see mm -hmm. now how, how <laughs> it displays exactly? And that wow. is why God shows how the table of shoe bread and also this one is. And it explains exactly how it is in the direction. Now, something that is very interesting that, that, that I explained to you. When we talk about, let me, I, I think I can rotate it. I think I can rotate it. Let me rotate it, flip it vertically. No, sorry, cancel. There is no way for me to rotate it. I hope I can rotate it. Okay, this is rotation, clockwise. Okay, <laughs> flatten. Okay, now when I rotated it, we need to understand that a relationship, our relationship um, with, uh, uh, we have two kinds of relationship. Let me explain it, number one two kinds of relationships, okay? When we have a relationship between God and us, it is a vertical relationship from the top to, the, to, to heaven, from earth to heaven. That is called vertical relationship, yeah. okay? And we have an horizontal relationship, which is between human being to human being. Wow. So there is there are two relationship, which is the vertical one and the horizontal one. When you combine the vertical relationship and the horizontal relationship, what is ending up? The cross. The cross as well. And mm -hmm. when we talk about the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, the three first commandments three first commandments or a vertical relationship. It says, mm -hmm. number one, how you cannot have other gods than myself. I am your God. That is a vertical between you and your God. Then the second one is do not have any kind of image that you worship. That is also vertical between you and your God. And then do not pronounce the name of the Lord in vain. That is also a vertical uh, relationship between us and God. And I will skip it now. The fifth commandment now, which is between you and your parents, that is horizontal. And then it continues with do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not lie, and do not... Uh, 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 conveyed and anything, those are also horizontal. It does not affect God because it is our relationship between us on earth. So when you combine the horizontal one with the vertical one, what do you end up? What makes the cross a cross? What makes the horizontal and the vertical combined not to fall apart? They, they join together? What, what the makes it joints? Because this is, let me say, this is uh, wood and this is wood. How do we make them to join together? It's a needle or a, oh, a needle. Oh, a nail. 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 Exactly. So what we need on the middle, uh, let me put it as a blue one so that we can see it. This one that is on the middle is making it combined. And this is representing the Sabbath day. So the Sabbath day is a time where you can have a vertical relationship. You worship God on the Sabbath day when you go to church. But the Sabbath yeah. day as well is a time where we are taking care of others in the same church. You see? 
And that is why it is a ver uh, an horizontal relationship and a vertical one. And that is the reason Satan wants to destroy the Sabbath day because the Sabbath day is the nail of the cross. And when you remove it, then everything will fall apart. Oh, yes. uh -huh. So what we need to remember is the tabernacle is constantly oh. reminding us that salvation is based on that tabernacle. And you can see now the cross shown inside of the tabernacle and it explains as well of the Sabbath day, which is the center of the tabernacle. Okay, now I will cancel it. I will cancel the, the change that I made. And this is uh, something that is important today. Let us talk about, uh, uh, I think we, you have chosen to change your, 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 your way of uh, eating now, isn't it? We have chosen. Are you uh, vegetarian or vegan now? Yes. Um, we are working on working towards vegetarianism. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, I am basically <laughs> vegan <laughs> because I had to give a lot, up a lot of stuff like dairy for baby. Yeah. But today, to <laughs> exactly. But today, I would like to ask us. Why, if we had to eat meat, why do we need to eat meat? Why is the reason we eat meat and what happened? So I would like you today to remember, based on the, the, the tabernacle always, what was the history of how we ate and why we ate now? And we I would like to lead us inside of the Bible. The first section okay. that we would like to go together is in the book of Genesis chapter two and the verse uh, 17. I would like to invite uh, 16. Let's start at 16. Uh, I invite uh, you that to read it for us. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, ye shall not eat. For in the day that ye eat of it, you shall surely die. Okay, thank you very much. If you may give me a second, uh, just a second. No problem. Okay, thank you very much. So here is the, 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 the story. Can you tell me what is the commandment of God in this, in this one? Not to eat of the tree. Oh. Are you sure? So the first commandment is that you shall eat freely of the God, exactly. every tree of the God. Oh, exactly. <laughs> that is where people are always wrong because oh. they always think of the not first. But God is never giving you a nut unless he gives you a what to do first. So the first commandment, it is a combination of what you ought to do and what you cannot do. So the commandment of God is always the same, what you ought to do and what you cannot do. Back also in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, chapter 20 and the verse 8. Can you read it for me, Sister Sunai? Sune. Yes, just verse 8. Verse 8 and 9. Okay. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Verse 10 as well, the first part. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it? Yeah, oh, in it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gate. So tell me, what is the commandment of God here? To remember the Sabbath. And? Keep it early. And then to labor for six days. Uh -huh. Do all your work. Um, but to... Raised on the seventh day, as it's the Sabbath of the Lord, in it exactly. shall not work. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Not, exactly. Yeah. So now so, I'm in your home. Allowed to work basically, <laughs> or in mm-hmm. your case. Mm-hmm. So my question is: If you do not work on the Sabbath day and you do not work during the week as well, are you obeying God? No. Because what is the commandment here? To work first <laughs> for six first days. First of all, <laughs> to labor for six days. So yes. if you have not accomplished that commandment first, you cannot have the second commandment, the second part of it accomplished. So yeah. the important part of it is when God is giving us a commandment, understand that it is in full part. And that is why when uh, the, 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 what is it called? When, the, when the, the serpent spoke with Eve, she only, he only took the second part. Can you see it? It says, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Oh, I see. And that's, uh-huh. that's a lie. And that is how uh, uh, she, she, uh, she has been, uh, what, deceived it's by true. Satan. Because Satan only used the part of it. And Satan knows the Bible. Satan knows exactly the word of God. But he's taking always part of it or he's distorting it every time. And that is why we need to understand exactly what God told us. So when he talks about uh, food, then God is telling us every tree of the garden you may eat freely. So the thing is this. Would Adam and Eve die if they eat from the fruit of knowledge? Sorry, say again. Would Adam and Eve die if they ate from the fruit of knowledge of good, new, good and evil? Would they die? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, die. Okay. Now, the second question is, would they die if they don't eat from the garden trees? Probably. <laughs> they need food, so... Exactly. So there are two reasons that Adam and Eve would die. If they Mm -hmm. ate from the knowledge of good and divine, and if they don't eat as well. And exactly the same way when we study the Bible. When you study the Bible, don't focus on the don't only. But if you don't study the Bible as well and you don't eat the Bible, then you will die spiritually as, as Judah said. So mm-hmm. most of the time people say that if I don't do nothing bad, then it's enough. But mm-hmm. if you don't do things good as well, it is worst. So we yeah. need to have a balanced life. We don't do things that is wrong, but we do things that is in front of us that, is out, that we ought to do as well. So the first part is this. There were trees inside of a garden. And that what is said on this part when it is uh, on the tree. Let me uh, go and explain to you what was on side of that tree. And look at the verse 9. Can you read the verse 9? And out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow that displays it to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge and of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Which means then that the first food that was God uh, intended for man to eat is only what? Trees and anything that is out of uh, trees, the fruits. But nowadays, you cannot only live with fruits. If you do that, you will die with diabetes. Because the fruits that we are using right now are too much sugar inside of them. They have changed it. And that is why you need additions on it. And when we talk about the food, the first part of it is, as you said, it was about fruit, uh, fruit only. Number one, food equal let me write it there food equal 
uh, only fruits. Now, the question that happened is, there was now uh, a flood and God said that he will destroy all the, 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 all the, all the animal on earth. So what happened then based on that? And he said on the verse, chapter seven, verse one, and uh, can you read for us, Judah, please? Just this one. Start on verse one. I will tell you when you need to stop. Okay. Then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female. Yes. Also now, seven. Mm -hmm. My question is this. Why before the Israelites exist, God already spoke about clean and unclean? Uh, I, I guess it's how God made the animals. Mm -hmm. There's some mm -hmm. animals that are unclean and some animals that are clean and each of them mm -hmm. has their own purposes. Exactly. Purposes. Mm -hmm. So now when we talk about clean, how many people, how many of the kinds shall we take inside of the, the, uh, the ark with clean animal? What you, what you found there? Seven of each clean animal. So how many, how many they are? Uh, let me say, the, we know that, the, for example, the, uh, the, the, the lamb is, uh, uh, let me say, for example, as well, the ox, it is clean. How many of yeah. them? shall be inside of the, the ark? I would say 14. 14, exactly. Yes. But let's take the dog. How many dogs shall be in the ark? Only two. And how many then shall be inside of the ark? Well, 16. No, 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 not really, not, not really two. It says two each of animals, which means two male, and two female. So how many of the dogs will be in the... the, the oh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, so it's four. Four. So there will yes. be four dogs in the, the ark, but 14 of the ox and the cow. Okay? Yes. Exactly. Tell me, if that is the case then, why did God uh, use... 14 for the clean and only four for the unclean. To answer this, let's go on the chapter nine. And then it says, uh, I invite Sunay to read it for us. I'm Sunay, I'm just quickly busy with the Zarya. Oh, you can read my brother. Okay, so chapter nine verse. Verse one to three. Okay, so God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth, on every bird of the air, on all that move on the earth, and on all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hand. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. Verse 4 as well. And five. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is its blood. Surely for your lifeblood I will demand a reckoning. From the hand of every beast I will require it. And from the hand of man, from the hand of every man's brother, I will require the life of man. Perfect. Thank you. When it says now, every moving things that shall live, I will be it will be food to you does it mean that the dog they can eat it no. No. why <laughs> because, because i'm clean exactly but how do you know that it is unclean because god said so to tell it to you is this to tell to you is this because there were oh, only four oh, inside of that on that egg so if Noah and his family ate the dogs, we all we no longer have any dogs on our generation. Oh, you see, but yes. the clean animal, 
they were a lot inside of Yak, so even if Noah ate from them, they were still a lot inside of Yak. To tell to you then, the reason the clean were more, more of uh, seven times compared to the, the, the unclean, which were only two times, it is because they were the one that God is talking here that you need to eat and not to eat because there was no, there were, there were no, um, no tree yeah. and anything that they can eat anymore on that time. Yeah. But now to be sure on it, and we will be ending in this direction. We go in the book of um, Leviticus chapter 11, and it is very clear on this direction. Maybe let me go to Deuteronomy first. Deuteronomy 14, we are all talking about it, but I invite both of you to, to, to read it together. Deuteronomy chapter 14, let me, Deuteronomy 14 and Leviticus 11. So uh, if you can read Sister Sune on uh, the one to uh, verse two of this uh, Deuteronomy. You are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves nor shave the front of your head for the dead. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Thank you. It says you are what? Holy, holy people. people. Uh huh. So when he spoke that they are holy, now it's talking about clean and unclean meat. What does it say to you? Okay, that yes. we need to be clean and not unclean. <laughs> it means then that your holiness depends on what you eat and not what you don't eat. So oh. that is the reason I explained to you, you are the temple of God. Not any kind of animal can enter the temple of God. It was only the lamb, also a clean animal, like the dove that can be sacrificed into the, 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 the temple, also the God. But outside of that, you have never heard of a pork being, um, uh, a pig being killed inside of the temple because okay. the pig is not clean. And that is why, your holiness depends on what you touch. And that reason is exactly why we do not smoke, why we do not drink, because we believe in our body as a temple of God. We cannot defile our body with anything that is not good. So let's go very straightforward on how we define if an animal can be eaten or not. Directly, let's go to, it says, you shall not eat any detestable thing, which means then if it is not eatable, then it is what in front of God? Unclean. Okay. Yes, but what do I uh, highlight on the screen? Detestable. Detestable. In another version, it says an abomination to God. So whatever is not clean is an abomination to God. And when you eat a food, Tell me, when you eat a chicken, uh, 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 what is happening? The, the, the hen that you eat, in that case, gave it his life, uh, its life to you so that you live by eating him, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And exactly sacrifice. When you sacrifice the lamb, lamb, the lamb die for you so that you live and it will die instead of you because of your sin. So when you eat then, you always sacrifice to the Lord because your temple is a body. Your body is a temple. And, and when any time you eat, you sacrifice to the Lord. And that is why the sacrifice between Abel and Cain was very crucial. And we will come back to that in, in the future. But today, what is important for us is to identify that whatever we, we put inside of our body, merci, whatever we put in our body is like what you put inside of the temple, okay? And mm. it says here, now, how do we identify them? It says now, 
uh, it says, and you may eat every animal with cloven hooves, cloven hooves, and having the hoof split into two parts, and that choose the cud among the animals. So this is the criteria on this direction. When we need to eat any animal with four, 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 four legs, do they have uh, hoof split, as it says here, and do they choose, choose the cud? in this direction. And that is why even the swine, which is the pig, is not clean because we cannot eat it. We cannot even eat the, the, the what is it called as well in this one? I don't see it in, in, in the list. You cannot eat, we can eat the deer, the gazelle, the deer, the goat, the antelope, the sheep. It is, remember what I told you, when God is giving your commandment, it is never about the no first. It is always about what is good and what is bad. So people always see it as the bad, but we need to know always that it is a combination of what you can and what you cannot. Now, yes. when you talk about the fish, it is explaining as well here. When you are anything inside of the water, here it says, you may eat all that have fins and scales. And that is why this is the criteria of what you can eat in the thing, in the fish. Uh, mm. Some of the, 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 the what we can say, um, the scientific of nowadays explains this. You know those, uh, what we, I don't know the name in English, but it, call, it is called crustacé inside of, uh, uh, in the French, which means including the oh, crabs, crabs, and then so also the the the, the shrimp, those lobster. animals and lobster, they all live in at the bottom of the the the, 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 the sea, and mm. any poison that are coming in the sea, they are there to clean it, mm. and when they, when you eat them you also digest the poison inside of them because their duty is to clean the, the submarine. The, the, and that is why God is not allowing us to eat them. However, the fish that are having fins and scales, as it says here, they are always on top, on top of the, 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 the level of the water and they only eat algs and sometimes also fish that they eat. And that is why those kind of fish that we eat is more healthier than the one that is at the bottom of the sea. I was, when I was Catholic, I ate um, crabs and I always had uh, allergies. When I ate shrimp, I always had allergies and had to eat, uh, I had yeah. to take uh, uh, what citrus to, to, to reduce that effect. So to tell to you, God is always knowing what is healthy and not. So when God is telling to us it is unclean, 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 unclean is equal health, not healthy. Yes. Okay. So you can always clean means healthy, unclean means not healthy. Then at the end, it talks about the bird. But the bird, there is no clarification, but most of the time, any bird that is eating flesh is not healthy. Looking yes. at the eagle, the vulture, the buzzer, any of them that are eating flesh is not healthy to ash. But any of the birds that are eating vegetarian things, they are kind that are, we can eat, as you can see on, 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 on the list as well. I will not go furthermore. Now, the question that is happening before we end today, is it really affecting our holiness and our salvation if we do eat them? The, the, the unclean animals. Yes. Yes. Yes, because it, it affects our, our mental health as well. If we are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. eating, not eating healthy. Your gut, your gut is Do you have the... uh, a, a verse that is related that you support what you say? 
Not yet? No. Okay, let's go directly to the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and the verse 17. Uh, would one of you please read it for us? I'll read it. Okay. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Can you tell me when, when is this one happening, this consumption? When, when, uh, when is the Lord about to consume us? Is it, was it happening already or is it the future tense? When Jesus, at the second coming. Exactly. That, if that is the case then, then between the time that God spoke about this until this is happening, you cannot eat swine. Otherwise, you will be consumed when you will come back, isn't it? So yes. no matter what you will say, the Lord is not the human being that he lie. That's what the Bible says. And whatever he says will be accomplished. How do the Bible compare the flesh of swine? Can you see here? It in swine flesh is an abomination. abomination. And also the same as eating the mouse. So even if you eat the mouse of the swine, it's exactly the same in front of God. Even if yeah. you eat the shrimp or also uh, all those kind of anything like, the, uh, I don't know the names of, uh, of them, the wither. I don't know the name in, in English, but anything that has no uh, scales and fins, it means that it is we cannot eat them, and and yeah. and and the fruits of uh, the, the the sea they call it fruits of the sea. All of them we cannot eat them because it is an abomination to the Lord. Remember, our body is God's temple, so yeah. only whatever is pleasing God we can put inside. Otherwise, we are defiling it. And then now yeah. people will say, but tell me. If that is the case, that is all in New Testament. But how can you prove to me that it is still existing in, in New Testament? What do you say? Okay. I, I, I think, there's, oh. I think yes. there's another verse. I just can't remember the verse. It also says, I, I can't remember now. <laughs> okay. Let me lead, it to, um, lead you to it. It is in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. It is in the New Testament. And this is what God said. Therefore, therefore came out, come out among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch. It is not talking about it. Even touching them of unclean and I will receive you. So when people is telling you, no, 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 it's in the New Old Testament, bring them in this mm -hmm. second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. It says, mm -hmm. do not touch the unclean. So even if you eat it, it is already touching it. So we cannot mm -hmm. touch them. And I will receive you, the Lord says. And when you do not touch them, I will be your father and you shall be my sons and daughters. Isn't this the same as I told you when I explained about the, the, the tabernacle that God wants to dwell among us? Yes. So the tabernacle is everywhere. Whatever you can put inside of the tabernacle is whatever you can eat. Whatever is unclean to the tabernacle is you cannot eat inside. So that's how it works. Now, uh, we have three minutes left. The question is this. When it happened in the book of Acts, chapter 10, that the Holy Spirit told to, to, uh, to the apostle Peter yeah. that he saw all the things that are coming down from heaven, including the snake, anything, and the, Paul vi the Peter vision. Let me come back to that. And he saw everything coming, falling from uh, heaven. 
and the, it was told to him. And the voice came to him and says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And what Peter said? Not, not no, so. Not so, for I've never eaten anything unclean. So when Peter was still not eating, Christians are already eating because it says that it was already clean. And it says now, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. Does it mean then that God has cleansed also the, 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 the dog and everything? And mm -hmm. it was said now that this was repeated how many times? Three times. Three times. Now, when Peter heard about it, he was thinking about it. And look at it. Now, while Peter wondered, which means he was still what? He wasn't sure. He wasn't sure. He was still thinking about it. What happened? Mm -hmm. Within himself of this vision, which he was seen and meant, behold, the man who had been sent to Cornelius had made inquiry uh, to someone at the gate. And they called and Peter were there. Simon, whose name was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the spirit told him, behold, how many of them? Three men. And how many times no. it was repeated? Three. <laughs> so Two. what the spirit is telling Peter? That these three unclean. <laughs> uh -huh. So in the coming. mind of the Jews, in the mind of the Jews, anyone that is not Jew Jewish is unclean and they are mm -hmm. not allowed to talk to them. And to show to Peter then that he can go with those Italian free men, it has been repeated three times. And how do we confirm that? Let's go on the verse 28 to end today. This is what it says on the verse 28. Then he, Peter, said to Cornelius, you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to, to keep company and to go to one another nation. But God has shown me when <laughs> that I should not call any, any food Man. or any <laughs> animal common or unclean. Was it he talking about food here? No, uh -huh. any man, any human. Exactly. So what God has shown in him in that vision is not about food. It is never about food. It was always about the man. So no man starting then should be called uncommon, common, or unclean. So we cannot use it that way. And then people said, but what about Jesus who said, whatever you put in your mouth is not clean and not uh, only whatever you, 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 you output is unclean. If mm. that is what God, Jesus was said, how come, how come, let me come back here. How come Peter said, no, Lord, I have never eaten anything come on and uh, clean. So whatever Jesus said when he was alive is not telling Peter to eat it because even Peter is confirming that Jesus never told such thing, isn't mm. it? Yes. So that means whatever Jesus said is not relevant about food if Peter is not eating it here. And what happened to Peter here? is telling us as well that it is about man and not food. So those yeah. are the things that I would like to tell you today. It is more about food. So the history of food is it is better for us to be vegetarian. The only thing that we will be looking later on in the future is why shall we be vegetarian? Because Peter, when Paul as well in the book of Romans chapter 14, he was talking about the step of food. And in the verse 21, it was very clear. It is good never to eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumble or is offended or is made weak. That is very clear. So we need to follow the guidelines that we have here. 
So I hope it, it will end here. We have already exceeded two minutes now. I invite uh, uh, Sister Sune to pray for us today as we end here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for um, bringing us together again to study your word and to eat and be satisfied and um, but still hungry for more <laughs> but for today it is enough thank you um, for um, uh, inspiring uh, brother to, to share the word with us and for him bless him for taking the time um, because he is also a busy man and he also has a family of his own that he needs to uh, also have to spend time with and send to them, Father. So we ask you to please bless him for giving up and sacrificing his time for us to help us to learn more. I pray that you please be with his family and be with us um, during the night so, so that we might have a blessed um, and a good night's rest so that we might be refreshed for the next day ahead. Um, please um, help us to, be, uh, to take what we have learned and to implement it into our lives so that we might be, um, uh, that we might grow uh, into the image of Christ that you have always wanted us to be. We ask all these things and we say thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I am stopping.